Hi, I'm Pastella, Steve on Waters. Welcome back to my uh, channel. Today's video is all about mixing pastel colors. Now, pastels come in thousands and thousands of different colors, and one color from one manufacturer to the next manufacturer, if it's a blue, they're going to vary because the way that these pigments are, are mixed by each pastel company varies greatly, and they, they all have different names too. So you can't buy one pastel and match it to another company. You would have to go back and buy the other pastel. So pastels come in all these different thousands of colors, and it's true that one of the great benefits to pastel painting is that you put a mark down, unlike oil or acrylic where you mix up a color, you put a mark down and you don't like it, you just put the stick down and you grab a different color. All right, but there is an ability to mix pastels on the canvas. Unlike mixing, well, you can mix oils and acrylics on a canvas too, but unlike mixing on a palette and then applying them in pastels, we typically call color mixing right on the surface itself. Now it is possible, and many artists do it, it is possible to paint many wonderful paintings and never really intentionally mix a color. You can just put the color down and pick up another. But as a beginner, many of you buy these boxes that have 40, 36, 70, 72, 120 colors. And the colors just basically sometimes limit beginning pastelists. You want something different. You want a different shade. You want a shadow without having to put uh, a black shadow and then a white white. You want to mix some colors that you don't have in the box. So today I'm going to show you some of those uh, simple techniques to mix colors. And uh, for the advanced or more advanced uh, artist, I want to also touch on a little bit of color theory. But we're not going to go deep into color theory. I'm just going to mix up and show you how you can also extend your box or your colors by making shades and making tints. So let's get at it and I'll talk over the uh, process and hopefully you can gather something from that. All right, and don't forget, subscribe below and you'll get uh, a notification and hit the, the notification bell and every time I put out a new video, then you can see if there's anything new that helps you. Okay, I'm gonna show you some mixing. I'm gonna use uh, complementaries. We're gonna use some blues and we're gonna use some oranges. Mixing complements is one of the easiest ways to create a uh, gray that might not be in your box. Um, if you had, uh, let's say, let's say you had some sort of sphere and you had light coming in on one side, I'm going to be using kind of a pinkish color. Uh, We'll make this kind of a cylinder, I guess, maybe. But by adding the complement orange over this, now you see how that orange is predominant. You don't want the orange to be predominant because you want uh, maybe to use something in the, uh, in the blue family. So we take a blue and we Scumble up over the orange, or we can cross hatch over the orange. You can blend up over the orange, and the orange will gray down that uh, intensity or the saturation of that blue. And there's the kind of pink color that I'm blending over that. But you can see how that the complements and darker values mixing and usually you have to put down the, the color you want and then put over that color uh, something that is darker. If we have a light orange and we put a light blue over the orange 
we have to come back with the orange or pinkish color, whatever light color you want over that in order to tint down or reduce the saturation of that uh, brighter hue or darker hue, I'm sorry, of the colors. And you can keep layering over as long as your tooth on your paper will allow it. And actually you can brush off some of that and add darks back into this if it's not getting dark enough. But remember, you got to go back over with the color or the hue that you're looking for in the overall painting uh, of an object. So if you have an object, red, red, orange barn, and you wanted to create a shadow side, using the complement is an easy way to darken when you have... Uh, when you have a limited number of pastels in your box, you're able to create more colors that are not available in there. Look how that look how that's going down. I've only got three uh, colors in here: uh, two oranges and a blue. And now I add the fourth, a little lighter blue. And I'll put a little lighter orange in there to go back over that blue, but you see it grays down the intensity. So you gray down your intensities and you're able to mix more colors out of a, a limited color box. This is a blue over a gray. I picked this lighter blue that we were using over in this area. And now this, this pink right here has a little bit of red in it. So um, you technically say that you're grabbing some reds to create some blue violets in there. But again, you're gonna have to go because you want blue, you're going to have to mix it back in. So this is an easy way to mix in your, uh, your various different colors. Now, a little more advanced, let's take a look at what uh, white will do. Um, when you add white in acrylics or oil painting, you are creating a tint. When you add black to a paint, uh, to a paint color or a hue, you are making a shade. So let me use an area here to show you a little bit about how also with the black and the white you can create a tint or a shade fairly quickly. Now just like in oil painting and acrylics, uh, many times they say stay away from or never use white or never use black. Um, those are generalizations. It is possible to use white and black, and especially with this method. You're not really, you're using white and black, but the ultimate color that comes out of it is a tint or a shade. Okay, so let's put our, our white in here. Let's put our black in here. All right, they're obviously white and black. Way too much contrast. And I'm going to use a little sample here to show how we can do some various tinting and shading. Remember when we use white and we put a color over the white, this is our color. We can change the color of our sticks by painting over white and we get a tint of that. And then if you want to blend it in, you can see the, you're no longer dealing with white. And this is very handy if you like snow scenes or sand, uh, sandy beaches or puffy clouds. The tinting of a color eliminates the white 
and put some color into your painting. Let's take that same color and now let's add the black. Now we are creating a shade. You can buy these shades like Sennelier makes a 170 through 177 that they call a uh, blackish green and it's quite popular with uh, many of my friends and it, you can see that we are creating kind of a blackish green there but the Sennelier color is more like this it's more just a little bit of green tint or uh, shade into the black and you might not be able to see it in the video but this is no longer a flat black but it has that green tint in it and if I use a different shade of got to find a spare spot here, an empty spot if I use a little darker shade of a blue green I'm going to get a different result I'll cross hatch over that first and then we'll blend it in and you'll see some of the uh, changes in this uh, shade this is a nice this is a nice way to create a shadow a dark shadow just a small area underneath uh, dense trees you can create your own uh, greenish blue or greenish blacks that way and we'll take a lighter blue blue green and we'll go into this tint here so you can see that by tinting this with white and going over the white you're able to create an entirely different color out of your box so if you've got 72 or uh, you got 70 different colors by just tinting the colors you would suddenly have 140 then you'd have another 140 um, by adding blacks and creating different shades so a 70 uh, stick color box could actually be multiplied uh, relatively easy and give you many different options and it even gets more colors when you take some of the other colors and you can blend them in so look at that beautiful that beautiful tint coming from this this and going on out into there beautiful pastels cross hatch blending uh, you can use wet pastels and mix them together that way too. So there you go. Some easy ways to expand your limited color box. Take care and hopefully you got something from this uh, quick tutorial. And next time we'll touch on something else. Eventually we'll get into some color theory and some more advanced techniques. Some wet, tech, uh, wet pastel techniques. But in the beginning here, let's just get you guys started. And if you follow me, Great. If you don't, find another pastelist. But the important thing is that at the end of the day, that we all find a little happiness. We've got to find happiness in life. And I hope you find happiness using pastel or some sort of painting or artistic expression. Because we can't go through life without having a little happiness. So bye-bye. We'll see you on the next one.